Uh, the first one is called um, The Gatekeeper. The Gatekeeper. Where is the gatekeeper? Where is all that shining coming from? How long have I been standing here looking into myself, looking into you, within us and without? And what is this invincible and everlasting faith that will not let me go? I have no use for the Stoic anymore. I was for too long not among the fearless. I went up the mountain on that cold winter night, and I was very afraid, and I shouted, where is the gatekeeper? And it was my own voice that answered me back through the valley. Thank you. I stole all of this for God. <laughs> The long poem is a literary genre including all poetry of considerable length. The definition of a long poem is vague and broad, but Wikipedia says includes some of the most important poetry ever written, like this one, which is being written right now in this writer's group. I have so many delightful lines and scraps in my notebook that I have been accumulating all week. Surely a very important long poem is destined to be born right here, right now, next to my latte. For instance, this line about an important hat and how sex is bartered. And this one about the butterfly effect and juxtaposing it with something I no longer remember. But look, here is my grocery list from Saturday. If you meet Buddha on the road, kill him. <laughs> That's an ancient koan. Is it? It doesn't matter. The first day of my mother's confirmation class, the minister threw the Bible on the floor. Everyone but the minister gasped. What did they know? Everything. It ruined them. When you die, there are two deaths. Banksy said this, but really, it was David Eagleman. It doesn't matter. Don't listen to me. When you die, there are two deaths. The first is when your body ceases to function. The second is that moment sometime in the future when your name is spoken for the last time. That will happen. There is a day written on the wheel of infinity when someone will speak your name for the last time. And that's what I really fear. My arrogance will outlast my body. No, that is what I really fear. It's like Salinger's Franny. I am sick of not having the courage to be an absolute nobody. I mean, isn't that why I'm writing this? I mean, isn't that why I'm standing here lecturing you about ancient koans? Don't listen to me. I know nothing. I am nothing. I am no thing. Is that the answer? Even that is a trap. That story, that story plagues me. That when you die, you go to a room and you wait until someone speaks your name for the last time. And when that happens, then you can move on to the other side, to the good part. No, that's what I really fear. I mean, every day I try to sit still without waiting. And in this story, I'll be dead and I'll still be waiting. And in this story, there's the story of the guy who owned a farm. He was an absolute nobody, but he stuck in the room waiting for someone to speak his name for the last time so he can get to the good part because his land became a university after he died and every day they give a campus tour and the guide says the site of the student union now sits on what used to be old man Johnson's farm. And boom, that's one more day for old man Johnson, stuck in limbo, waiting for the good part. I mean, he was nobody, and his nobodyness condemns him. Maybe I should try to be somebody. So what's that? What's that? Every day I get up 
and I pray, God, should I be nobody or should I be somebody? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the voice comes back, what is the story you would lay down your life to tell? I have no idea. And that's what I really fear. I mean, I can only pick one. The saints say that the one is hidden in the name, the divine name, the name of love, and that's what I really fear, that I am being called to be pure love, because how the fuck do you do that? I met this woman at a poetry forum. She said to me, that is a very nice hat. It's an important hat. People wear unimportant hats today. Sex is bartered. What? Oh, she doesn't know. She doesn't know how much I have bartered underneath this hat. I have bartered my discernment for judgment. I have bartered my faith for self-delusion. I have bartered my confidence for pissing contests. I have bartered my generosity for doormats. I have bartered my naked body for expediency. I have bartered my brain for a paycheck. I have bartered my passion for lack of integrity. I have bartered my peace for yours. I have bartered my life for just one more drink. My cat died in October, inside of three weeks. Sometimes three weeks is all it takes to lose perspective on what is healthy and normal. How making charts and appointments with specialists is sometimes the only way you know how to love someone. In three weeks, I learned what Rilke either said or didn't say, that every angel is terrible. That cat taught me how to let someone work for love. She taught me when being smothered how to get out with your last bit of strength, how to let go when you can't breathe anymore, how to live again even if you die trying. Don't we all die trying? I am carrying this message to you, but not the mess, for I am making my mess my message. Mother Teresa said the following, but it doesn't matter, and why are you still listening to me? All I can offer is my emptiness. Even God cannot fill that which is full. And I am emptying myself of all of it in this very long, least important poem ever written. Listen to me. If you meet Buddha on the road, kill him. I know where I'm going. I have no fear. I will meet you there. You can have my name. I am not waiting. I am speaking it now for the last time myself. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, this is a pantoum, which if you don't know, the second and fourth lines become the first and third of the next stanza and begins and ends with the same line. It's called The Hike. And thanks for your patience slogging through these long ones. So. <laughs> the Hike. I am the leader on this trail, on the hike, this hike. Looking back, are you with me on the hike, this hike? Are you okay? Are you with me? Are you tired? Are you okay? Should I slow down? Are you tired? Are you enjoying yourself? Should I slow down? No one is enjoying themselves. Are you enjoying yourself? I'm the leader. No one is enjoying themselves. Why am I the leader? I'm the leader. How did I get to the front of this line? Why am I the leader? Who picked me? How did I get to the front of this line? Did I volunteer? Who picked me? I don't know where I'm going and I've been here a million times. Did I volunteer? Whose woods these are? I think I know, but I actually don't remember. I don't know where I'm going and I've been here a million times. It's silent everywhere, except in my head. Whose woods these are? I think I know, but I actually don't remember. The acorns are falling. It's silent everywhere, except in my head. It's summer's end. The acorns are falling. 
Look back. It's summer's end. Are you coming? Look back. Make sure no one got hit on the head with an acorn. Are you coming? Are you coming anyway? Make sure no one got hit. Those thoughts, I need not attend to them. Are you coming anyway? Just get underneath those thoughts. I need not attend to them. And underneath the thought is a thought. Just get underneath. Look back. And underneath the thought is a thought. And underneath that thought is the radiating cosmic hum of everything. Look back, not out there. And underneath that thought is the radiating cosmic hum of everything down here. Not out there. Right here. Down here. Yes, this is a part of that. Right here. The sound of tension leaving the jaw muscle. Yes, this is a part of that. The slide down into the ancient rock. The sound of tension leaving the jaw muscle. The purple thistle. The rushing high grass. The slide down into the ancient rock and through it a noise. The purple thistle. The rushing high grass. The branches breaking straight up the side of a cliff. The slide down into the ancient rock. Look back, the branches breaking straight up the side of a cliff. What is it? I asked. Look back. Human, she said. What is it? I asked, looking back. Human, she said. And I was annoyed, but it made sense. Looking back, only a human would be that stupid and obtrusive. Human, she said. There you are, looking back again. Only a human would be that stupid. Underneath, there you are, looking back again. To continue, I continued. Underneath, underneath and aside. To continue, I continued. That was the way the glacial ice came through. Underneath and aside. Ripped a tread for that lake. That was the way the glacial ice came through that river. Ripped a tread like all things that size and that cold will do. That river, this rock face I sit atop. Like all things that size and that cold, I try not to think how the leaves are already changing on this rock face I sit atop. How I have to go back soon, so I try not to think how the leaves are already changing, how I'm always thinking about what's next, how I have to be back soon, and next, how I'm always thinking about what's next, and next we move on, and next back on the trail, next we move on. I am still looking back, back on the trail, everyone is having a terrible time. I am still looking back, this is unsure footing this terrain, everyone is having a terrible time. It is the only thing I am sure of, this is unsure footing this terrain. There is a purpose to being here. It is the only thing I am sure of. I have some nerve taking you to a place of such vast beauty and solace. There is a purpose to being here. Are you okay? I have some nerve taking you to a place of such vast beauty and solace and then worrying about you so much. Are you okay? Are you happy? I worry about you so much. Mind the acorns. I am the leader on this trail. This is called Noose, N-O-U-S, and the epigraph is from the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. The teacher answered, it is neither through the soul nor the spirit, but the noose between the two. In between the part that is not a part, not a part from spirit, but not through spirit, not a part from soul, but not through soul. The in-between, through the slip on an experience, the one that is only human, divine, and utterly common. The split second you utter, maybe, as the seizure grips the body on the bathroom floor. Through the moment when the eyes opened after the night, after never again, that that in-between, that rope around the neck before you kicked the chair out. Fall on your knees, go back to your life, your life. That is the part that is required, strangely. Not the vision, the prayer, 
the church, the temple, the devotion, the angel, the revelation, the promise, just promise to present yourself. That in between the you and it, between who you think you are and the great I am, the small knowing that you are nothing and everything, that there is something larger than you and you are that thing and not at all that part. That will save your life as you lay dying. Wow. Thank you so much.